Hello guys, thank you for joining us today. Today we will have a different session, okay? We will have a booking show that's going to be hosted by Beatrix Movai, one, your, one of your beloved coaches, okay? So now I will share my screen and I will ask Ania to do the presentation, okay? Let me share, present. Okay, yeah. So, yep, yeah. So, hey guys, I'm Ania. I'm a lead coach from the Philippines, and I'll be not really hosting, but I'll introduce our host for today. And it is Beatrix Mervai, as Rafael said, and she is a coach. So, can we go to the next slide, please? So, Beatrix, I think you can introduce yourself from here on out. Uh, sorry, could you say that again? Uh, you can introduce yourself from here on out and the dish that you'll be making. Oh, yeah. So uh, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Beatrix. Uh, I'm with Exculture since 2019. And as my uh, cultural background, I'm from Romania, but ethnically Hungarian. So today we will have a Hungarian dish one of my favorites it is called lecho and it's mostly like a summer dish this is a not the most successful photo i will promise you that today we will be having something nicer looking uh this is like a traditional food usually like the basic recipe is with uh, onions um um belly pepper and tomatoes but then again you can add more extras and we are going to do that today um and you will see in a second from my other camera that i actually have really nice um, uh, ingredients for you and i think that we can start you will need the following veggies and spices Okay, uh, so uh, I think that I joined from my other camera. Yes, that is tricks move. <laughs> there it is. If you can have that paint. Uh, yes, so the other one. Because you will be seeing my back from here. Can you see me here? Um, yeah, we can. Okay, uh, so let's start. I will put on the uh, stove. I will add some oil. And until the that is getting hotter, uh, we will prepare the ingredients. This is homemade pork belly. It's from my granny. Uh, the best quality, I would say. And yeah, let's begin. Wait, what is this? Is this, is it bread? No, it's pork belly. Oh, pork belly, okay. So it's, it's kind of like bacon, but more like the fatty part. It's for, it has, um, it was uh, smoked and then it will offer a nice uh, taste to the whole dish. But it can be omitted if you want to make it vegetarian. Okay. So wait, how is the pork belly prepared? Is it like um, just smoked? Like, do you do anything else to it? Um, it is cut to one one per one meter um, cube um, squares. Uh, then you uh, put it in salt for two months, I guess. It's with the pork skin. And you put it in salt for one or two months, and then we have like a smoking device, and then you need special uh, types of wood to smoke it. And then it's usually like it is the preparation starts in December and it's done by April also. So Beatrix, we have a question from our coach Ava, none other than anybody else. She's asking you where your apron is. That's really tardy from you. 
Sorry? Where's your apron? You're cooking without one. Oh, I don't have one. Sorry. That's not uh, in the basic uh, packet of a student. Yeah. I have a nice t-shirt with mushrooms on, so that might be okay. And I'm not messy, so I don't need an apron. Yes, I don't know. Let's check the oil. Oh, uh, not yet, sorry. Uh, <laughs> No problem. Oh, by the way, if you guys have any questions, feel free to open your mic or type in the chat, okay? Yes. Uh, actually, this is my favorite dish. It just like tastes like home, if that, that might be like a taste, but it, it, it really is. So we prepared this one. Let's add it. I hope that the oil is no, it's not hot enough yet. Okay, so uh, you cannot see in my pan, but I will add this and prepare the other ingredients. So for the next one, we will have like these sausages. It's like the hot dog sausage. Some use also the traditional one, but I don't like that. So we will have these. Uh, how, how often do, do you cook this dish? Um, at least once every two weeks or almost every week. I really like it. But it depends on my time. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So you mentioned this is like your like family recipe or like your grandma's recipe. So like, is this like a dish which has like a lot of like family variations in like Hungary? Uh, yes, mostly there are variations. This is not this is not even like my granny's recipe, but my own because she usually doesn't use chicken in it. But it mostly depends on the seasonal vegetables because when it's like when you have mushrooms at home or something like that, you put that one in. When you don't, you just don't. So it, it's kind of, uh, can be, it's, it's really creative. You use what you have and then just uh, uh, change uh, the um, spices as well, depending on what veggies you use. I will explain that later as I, as I start adding the vegetables. Yes, it should be already like... Um, yeah, we, we have to wait for a little bit. I will prepare all the ingredients meanwhile. So let's put this apart aside. Yes. Uh, So, so is is it common to eat lexo in Romania? Uh, this is this is not a Romanian dish. Actually, Romanians don't have it. Oh no! Oh no! They they aren't a fan of it. I don't know. Maybe they like meat more. <laughs> but how how did you learn? Like, so do you have a Hungarian friend or family? It's a family recipe. It's a family recipe. I have a Hungarian family, so yes. So uh, it's um, harder to cook, obviously, like because you're in a university dorm room, right? Yes. So yeah, my space is limited, but we will manage somehow. But it's not that hard because I do have enough space. It's just that I had to uh, refurnish the kitchen part so that you can see everything going on. Actually, I, I thought that your room is quite big. I have seen smaller ones. So I think you have a, a good room. Yes, at least I have a kitchen. Um, yeah. Next step, we will need to 
middle sized onions. And we prefer like the yellow ones. I don't know like how you call them because in my language, these are actually like red and the other, other ones are purple, but I don't think that these are like really red, to be honest. Because the uh, darker ones, like the, the ones purple in color are like too sweet for this. So we prefer the usual onions. And I would say that the most of the difference that like the, that varies for each person is how you uh, cut the veggies. I prefer them like to have like uh, long slices because it's more, it looks better for me in the end. Yes. Uh, are the background noises really bad? No, actually, no. it sounds like um, one of those like satisfying cooking videos, but like live, so it's really cool. Yeah. Because I thought that the audio from my laptop would work better. It's it's perfect. We can just hear your live sounds. Okay. So basically we want long and thin slices from our onion. And I will add this to the pan as well because meanwhile our bacon started to look really nice. Yes. Uh, you can actually see me, but I will move my phone. Uh, this is a recipe for just one person or for more? Sorry? This recipe that you're doing right now is just for one person or for more people? I would say that this amount is enough for me, like for two days. So like three people, I would say, to eat once. But it really depends on portions. I eat a lot, so. <laughs> oh really? I didn't know about it. So you were a thin just how? <laughs> Sorry, now I can hear you better. How you are thin and you eat a lot? Um uh, well uh, I think that you saw my um plate in the first photo well that one is, is like um deep plate and yeah i can sometimes eat two of these so it depends uh now we will add the uh, sausages and let it stir until the onions become like almost transparent and in the meanwhile we have two beautiful uh, valley peppers here, and we uh, will cut these up. Uh, we weren't gonna need the wall, so I'm taking half half because if we add too much pepper, then it will become um, bitter and we don't want that. And actually, uh, in my mom's opinion, adding the pepper right after the uh, onions is the most important trick for it to be really good in the end. We also aim for long slices because it just looks good. Uh, just a second. I heard like something on the chat. Yes. Um, I'm not the best cook either, Louise. 
Uh, what are gyozas, Eva? I know as a Japanese food. Is it the Japanese yeah. or, or? Yeah, this? yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. It's it's like uh, I don't know how to explain what is gyoza. It's like a it's like a pan seared dumpling. Like I guess that's the best explanation you can give because it's like crispy at the bottom as well. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, I guess. Um, can you? See yeah, it? yeah, it is. You can see. It. Sorry, I'm with my back to the camera where I can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, we can see it. So that, that's perfectly fine. Now we have, now we have to let it stir like for five minutes before adding the next ingredient, which will be two tomatoes and some zucchini. Yes. So I'm actually trying to create a rainbow here. So I brought two different colored zucchinis. I hope that it will look really nice. By the way, your veggies are looking pretty great, really. All the veggies are, are that good where you live or not. Sorry? All the veggies in Netherlands are uh, already uh, pretty looking good as as yours or are not? Eventually not. I went especially to a Turkish market to get the veggies. Oh. I'm not really a fan of the ones in the supermarket. So I especially made, uh, I ran around to get you nicer veggies and I'm really sensible about it because some veggies in the supermarkets just taste like plastic so yummy yummy this like, part, like those chilies look incredible i'm just saying those are like amongst the better looking chilies i've ever seen that's a yeah. really thing to say but yes me too me too yes, i i actually have something even better these are also mm -hmm. chilies so this is this is the strong stuff <laughs> oh it is like I will show you when I when they will be out. Oh, it's oil. Oh, that is. I'm assuming. Uh, just for curiosity, how does it cost the tomatoes? Um, I think like the for the tomatoes will like three three euros, which is basically three dollars per Each. kilogram. Ah, oh, per kilogram. Per kilogram, and for. I don't really remember. I know that like I had two bags of veggies for 11 euros, which is $11 basically. And that was like really cheap, I guess, with our inflation on. So. Actually, the zucchini, sometimes it's not ready at the same time as other vegetables. So we are cutting it really, really thin. And I also halved it like this so that it will get ready easier. But I wouldn't say that if it's like only, it's still a little bit crispy, it would be a problem. I actually like it that way. So if you want it to be like sloppy, you can add it like with the onions, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> and meanwhile, we still need to keep a track on this. Yes. And now we will add the zucchini to it. 
and put a little bit of salt. Uh, yes. Uh, by a little bit, I mean like this. I don't know how much that is, but for we will start out with that much. And stir it. I will show you how it looks at the moment. It's really colorful. And it looks really nice. Yes, it is. Yeah, so we need the tomatoes to make it more um, toasty. But if you add too much tomatoes, which would be in our case like four instead of two, it gets sour. So don't do that mistake. And actually, these are not the best quality tomatoes, but they are still fine. Uh, the best tomatoes are the ones which are a little bit um, flatter and rosy. That's like the flesh tomato type. And those are like the more tastiest ones. These are like normal tomatoes. But I couldn't find these for you. But I think that I added the photo of them in the recipe. But those tomatoes are also looking very good. Yes, but there is a better time. Oh. But I couldn't really find these, unfortunately. But before buying tomatoes, just check them for to be like uh, heavy. And it sh they should smell as a tomato paste on the pizza for it to be really good. If you cannot smell them, don't buy them. That is an interesting tip. What if you have COVID and then you can't just smell stuff? Because that happen? What if you have COVID and then you can't just smell anything? The, I mean, if you have COVID, you won't go uh, to do groceries, basically. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can ask the people in the yeah, market. Can you smell for me, please? And I will show you something like in the pan already, it's like not a watery liquid underneath, but like it's it's like a sauce. So it, 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 it already started to look nice. Okay, now I'm already in the hungry shit. <laughs> okay, and uh, now we will prepare my favorite part. <laughs> as in mushrooms. Champions are also nice, but these, these are better. Can you see them? Yes, you can. Is it a normal mushroom in the no, Netherlands? It's, you can get it at any supermarket. I think that they are like, in my language, they are called um, rabbit ear mushrooms. I couldn't really find the mushroom type in English, so just look for these. They are like really interesting looking, but um, it gives like, um, it's as if I, uh, you would have like tofu in the dish. So most, most of the time you can skip like the uh, sausages and the uh, pork belly uh, thing. And then the mushroom and the zucchini will add like consistency to it because like the onion, um, uh, peppers and the tomato mix is most like just like the saucy base. And what you add over it will actually make it tasty. These mushrooms actually are like a recent discovery. I tried it only once or twice, but it's, it went really, nice oh, oh, every time. So they became my new favorite. <laughs> yes. I 
I usually cut them like only in smaller pieces for them to get uh, cooked easier. For this, I don't really have a certain shape. But it will taste almost as if it would be like meat in the mix in the end. Uh, um, one question. Uh, do you know why is it called the Hungarian ratatouille? Uh, actually, I called it that way because we only have like the lecho, but um, some Romanians do uh, do have it as a dialect word, but there's no actual. It's it was like for you to understand what type oh. of fish. Oh, okay. I got it. Got it. Like Rafa, you seeing the amount of vegetables in the dish? It isn't like difficult to call it that, though. So it's just like that was like the closest that I could get, like on an international level. I know that there is a um, Turkish dish which is kind of similar, and apart from that, I don't know about other cultures. Does any of you have a similar dish in your country? I mean, I'm Indian. A lot of our dishes are like very vegetable heavy. But like we have this one in particular. Um, I don't, okay, so like we have a couple of like dishes which are like grouped under this like very ambiguous name called mixed vegetables. And it's basically literally mixed vegetables with a bunch of spices. It could like be literally anything, but like, yeah. Um, so it, I guess that could be like an example. This is also like mixed veggies, but I mean, lecho doesn't really have a meaning. Like the word lecho doesn't have a meaning apart from this dish in Hungarian. So, I mean, I think that I have to taste the chilies to see how much I should add. So wait, Beatrix, is this like a winter dish or like a summer dish? Uh, I would say summer dish, but since we have supermarkets, it can be made in the winter too. Mm -hmm. But I will show you something interesting in one second. This is what my granny prepared. It's kind of the same base as there, but for the winter. Oh, wait, so it's like a pre-made base, like you can just like store that? My granny can't store anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so wait, how long does that like mixer last? This one, I think that like three years, but it usually never lasts that long. Three years? Oh wow! Okay, what are you pickling it with? I don't That's know. I don't know. I if this is something new that she did like alone, so I don't know. But they last really long. My granny is the queen of pickles. I'm going to have to like disagree with that because I believe that every single granny is the queen of pickles because literally every single granny makes every single pickle known to man. I don't know how they do it, but yeah, they do. Okay, uh, since it's a little bit spicy, I will go with this much and add one of these just to open it. I'm really curious because I am supposed to have this from home, but somehow it got lost during moving, so I had to buy one from the store. So but really... Do you like spicy food or not? Yes, yes, yes. I, I love it. Okay, so yes, no, uh, you can see it now. I will take out one of these. This is how this little beauty looks like. Oh, this is... No, these are a stronger one, right? Yes. Yeah, because it's smaller. Yeah. And I usually don't actually like cut it in small pieces, just like have a cut each on each uh, direction and put it like this. Because actually to uh, chew this spicy little devil, uh, it's not the best experience. So it's, it's, it's just too spicy for anyone to eat it. <laughs> And um, now I guess that we have to wait for like 10 minutes or so. Meanwhile, we will prepare the spices, which we will add like right before it is done. And I actually forgot to take out the eggs from the fridge. So I will move this for a second. Yes. 
No. Oh, just a second. You will be moved. Oh, why? I want to be here. <laughs> because I need access. And my fridge was right underneath and I forgot to prepare them. Yes, now it is back. Yes. Okay. And I have eggs from home. As you can see, every egg is a different shape, color, and size. We will need three, I guess. And now I will show you how the dish looks at the moment. It's almost done. The sauce is already here. And the veggies got a little bit sluggy. This is what we are looking for. I will prepare the spices, add the eggs, and I think that we are done. Yeah, it's looking great, even. Uh, way better than the photo. Yes, I told you that the photo wasn't like the best. I, I'm well aware of that. Yeah. So actually, I managed to get uh, fresh presley. It's not the fresh chest, at, I mean, as of today, but it was two days ago. Wait, so one question. Why are the eggs like different colors and stuff like, are they like free range or something? What is free range? The eggs. Uh, the eggs are from, also from my granny. I got them in a package a week oh. ago. <laughs> With granny, like, on a farm? Uh, yes, it's, it's from my home. So it's from a farm, you could say that. It's natural and they look better. That's really cool. Because the ones that you have in the supermarket uh, have a really... A uh, light colored yolk, but these these are supposed to have a darker, almost orangish yolk inside. That's the difference. And that fact is due to the um. Uh, that is because uh, our chickens are eating corn, and like the ones uh, from the factory. So I don't know how to call them. Like the industrial ones are uh, getting some type of. Um, supplements and stuff but not natural food like do they taste different yes and um, it's not that uh, important for food but when you are um, baking it does make a difference for i mean like your cakes get bigger fluffier and better looking and better tasting. Oh, really? I didn't know about it. Yes, because most of the people don't have access to that. So yeah. now I have here pepper. Uh, I think this is presley, but we don't need it because we have the fresh one. And then we have dill. And this is a savory. So we will start with this. I will do this. And then just like throw it inside like this. This gives it like a really interesting taste. This is my favorite uh, spice. I cannot really eat, have this dish without uh, savory. And uh, just the others. one question. Uh, what is dill? I have no idea what is it. Uh, you have it in the presentation and actually this is dill. How does it taste? Yes. So you only add it if you put zucchini in. If not, it's kind of like unnecessary. Because in our culture, grannies usually teach you which um, spice go well with which veggie. And dill is like the, a must go for uh, zucchini. But, but what is the, the taste of dill? I have never seen it, I think. It's a fresh, almost like kind of minty. Minty? Oh. Yes, herb. So it's really, I, I like it. And we put it in like, um, we ha also have like the dill seeds and those are used uh, for tea. And um, 
some kind of sausages, but I'm not good at that one. Can you put a little bit of pe uh, pepper? Now we will stir. And I will taste. <laughs> Just to make sure that everything is nice. Now it get like more colorful. I will show you how it looks like. Oh, sorry. From here you can see it. So the peppers got sluggy. You cannot really see the onions anymore. And everything else is like cooked. And you have the nice sauce to it. Sometimes when your um, tomatoes are of no not are not the best you need to add some water but i got lucky and now we will add the eggs i will show you the yolks in a second these are not that deep in the color but still better than the ones in the supermarket Yes, there they are. And oh, that, they are really orange, you're right. So they are orangey, so they are more healthy. And some love to keep them like, like to have a boiled egg inside of the dish, but I like it to, I like to stir it and make it more creamy like this, so that you won't actually see the egg inside, but have a more creamy sauce to it. like this. And now I will add the parsley and we are basically done. Um, Beatrix, can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Okay, are you gonna eat all of this alone? No, actually, I'm going to share with the other people in the door, most oh. probably, because they are also, like, interested in our dishes. So I that's will great. Eat. And that's how it looks like. I will put it on a plate. Uh, one small trick for parsley is that you add it in the end, or it also gets, like, a weird taste to it. So you can only add it by the end. And I hope that I didn't make it too uh, spicy. And if I did, then that's it, I guess. And it, this one will definitely look better than in the photo that I have done previously, because we use more colors. Yes, so this is the dish for today. I hope that you will try it out. And I usually ate it with white bread, but you can also have like um, both potatoes next to it. How about rice? Rice is also fine. I guess that rice is also a good go. Oh, uh, other like ricey type of cereals that you might have so it really depends on you or oh, oh just bread that's the easiest <laughs> oh wow so wait could you just like hold up the things and like i'll take a screenshot just a second yeah yes so here it is <coughs> got it perfect thank you Thank you, Tejas. Thank you, Beatrix. I Please. hope you enjoyed and that you saw most of it. Yes. I might not be the best cook, but I hope that you understood. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I really liked the presentation. Thank you very much, Beatrix. Is Sania here? Um, no. No? Okay. Just let me change it. Okay. Uh, just... Uh, recap of the week guys so 
you are on week four of the training uh, theoretical phase, right? So make sure to submit your test by tomorrow at the same time as always, 11, 59 p.m. And if you miss the test three, I, I gave you another opportunity to take as well, okay? Next week, if you guys fail or miss any test, I will give you guys one last chance to take it. So if you miss uh, week one and week two, I will give just one more week to take all the, the missing tests, okay? Uh, so you, I will give you this one last chance. So take it if you want, okay? Also, if you request for scholarships, stipends, make sure to submit your documents by the end of next week. And you guys can, next week, yes, yes, I, yeah. I think it's uh, 23, 23, I don't remember right now, but I, I will send you a message. And <clears throat> I think that's it. Do you guys have any questions related to, to, to the program right now? Everything is clear? Yeah, thanks. Okay, all good. <clears throat> also, we have one more announcement. Uh, Leon, are you there? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so I just want to let everyone know that today we are launching Peace Project, um, which is a program aimed at nurturing and appreciating our well-being. I know in our society, in our world, you know, we get caught up with studies, work, university, etc. So um, I know it can be really hard to actually take time out and look after our own well-being and ourselves in general. So Peace Project is just a way of guiding each and every one of us just to paying a bit more attention to our own well-being, etc. So it is optional. It's all going to be on Discord. Um, the announcements are already up and everything. So I really encourage you all to take part. Um, but again, it is completely optional. Well, optional, sorry, English. Um, and then other than that, just so you all know, uh, my name is Leon. I am the lead of, um, ex well, lead of ex Hotship, lead of Peace Project. Um, and the rest of my team isn't here besides Tejas. So if you just want to introduce yourself. Hi guys, um, I'm Tejas. I'm also part of the Peace Project team. I'm really excited to see um, what you guys will have um, in store for us and what we will have in store for you through a series of fun and exciting activities that are going to come over the course of the next few weeks in order to, in order for us um, to sort of get into the themes of well-being and growth and it's really going to be fun so head on over to discord I hope you can see the channel the peace project channel and um, get engaging we are ready and we look forward to having a lot of interaction with you guys over the next few weeks Thank you, Tejas. Thank you, Leon. So, as you may, I just said, you guys will, if you pass all the tests, you have one week as a free, a free week. Okay, so it's a, your opportunity to start engaging in those activities as well. Okay. Mahmoud, do you have any question? I saw your hand up. No? No? Okay, then. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much. And next week, we will have a special event we will announce during the weekend, the, the week, okay? So thank you very much, Ania. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you, everyone, to join us. And good luck in your tests, and see you soon, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Best of luck.